let's catch up on some of the builds happening all over the server because there's been a lot happening while I sidetracked into crane operation and discussing game features. I want to go over all the changes taking place, some new laws, and various builds happening in this playthrough. First is the beloved Mint. It got a big makeover with the addition of a second story and a sub-basement that you can't see. This was actually something we needed to do as the server progressed. We used to mint the gold into coins almost as soon as it would come into the door, because we needed to get some currency in circulation, have enough money available to all the players to buy lots of goods, and have a supply of money in the government accounts to fund all the government projects. What's happened now is that we have a fairly good amount of currency in circulation. So the treasury went into a mode of starting to slowly stockpile some of the mined gold ore, while also slowly minting less and less of it into coins. The stockpiling allows us to mint money for the government on demand when a new government initiative gets started. And we have a really big one that's going to require a lot of initial funding, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Next are two big mine expansions that I've needed to do for myself. When the industrial elevators were introduced, it required a much larger hole in the ground to accommodate these massive pieces of equipment. I've been working on one of these mine shafts right next to my semen and compost center and decided to make it a little bit fancy by lining the interior with smooth mortared stone. I'm creating this large building as an expanded warehouse to hold the industrial elevator along with another one of the large lumber stockpiles. Yes, I can't seem to get enough applied use of these extra large stockpiles. I also was never really quite that happy with the original concrete and compost center. The all concrete look of it along with the square block was never quite what I was looking for. So, with this expansion to the original building, I've made it out of concrete mixed with ashlar shale and kept it to what I hope is still clean and modern lines while still keeping a little bit of that industrial look that I wanted. While I was at it, I redid some of the corners of the compost center to give it a little bit of extra sauce and help tie it in with the ashlar stone. I'm pretty happy with the way it's turning out, and now that it's more of a rectangular shape, I've even considered adding a massive second floor on top. What for? I don't know. But in Eco, you do some things because you need to, and some things because you just want to. The underside of both these buildings also got some attention by bricking in the entire foundation. I had the original building setting on some pillars, which didn't look bad, but I think this looks a little better and gives me a nice enclosed space underneath where I can do something. The other mine shaft that needed a makeover and enlargement was one I had back at my workshop in my main mine. This one, I decided to operate a little differently and create an opportunity for other players. There's been several new players coming into the server over the last couple weeks, so I posted a recurring contract that they can come take to mine in my mine, break up the rocks, fill a nearby stockpile, and get paid. These kind of labor-only contracts are really good for new players, because all they need is a pickaxe, and they start the game with that, and a couple stacks of food for calories to do the digging. The contracts are somewhat limited in what you can do, so the one I wind up using the most is the Custom Clause. It allows me to describe the work that I want and establish a payment for it that seems reasonable. I thought about using this other option of placing items into a container, which in this case was placing the rocks into a stockpile. But the issue there was that I knew there was a mixed type of rock that they'd run into and you have to specify exactly how many of a given rock you expect to place in the stockpile in order for the contract to be considered complete. But what you can also do, and what I did, is set permissions that go along with the contract. In this case, the permissions is to open the door leading into the mine, so they're able to access the mine, do the work, leave the mine, and then mark the contract as complete to get paid, while at the same time removing permissions to the door. This way, I don't have to be online for someone to take this contract. 
this mine shaft is a little bit hazardous as well because you can fall into the existing shaft, which is quite deep and can be a little difficult to get out of. So for that purpose, I added one of the small elevators and a call button way at the bottom. So if you do fall in, at least you can bring the elevator down and get yourself back out. In this same area, I've also done a massive amount of digging and pushed my excavation far enough to reach an area underneath my main crafting tables so that I could add another one of these, yes, large lumber stockpiles. But I really needed it. And I will say that most of this digging would not have been possible without the awesome excavator to facilitate the work. This unruly piece of machinery is truly a monster at digging rocks, and for large-scale work is far superior to the skid steer. But I'll be talking about the excavator and how to get the most out of its use in another video. There was also a fair bit of work done to create and test some new laws to help facilitate government-funded building projects. I've tried different things, including having a government store, using contracts, and various combinations of these things, but most of them seem to have a drawback in one area or another, and this is no exception, but where I've finally settled is about the best I think I can get, and I'm able to do it because this long-running server has settled in, for the most part, on the pricing of goods. What this law does is pay people to place blocks but it scales the payment based on the tier of material used for the build. If I'm putting out a contract that's very specific on materials, that allows me, as the government, to promote using materials from certain skills that seem to be struggling economically. Or, it allows me to better set a limit to the cost the government's willing to spend for a given project. On the other end of the spectrum, if neither of those things matter, it allows the contractor freedom to select whatever materials they want to express their creativity in the design and reward them for using the higher tier and more expensive materials. Now what I didn't want with this contract is for the person who produces a given building material to also profit from placing their own material through these build contracts. To share the wealth, I wanted those who make the products to profit from selling them to others, who will then profit by placing those materials. So not only is the law broken up into sections to pay a different profit margin for placing different materials, there's other sections that will only cover the cost of the material itself if you do not have the skill for creating it. This doesn't prevent material makers from taking the contracts, it just means they either have to select using other materials they don't make, or accept the fact that the government isn't going to pay them for producing their own product. Maybe that seems a little bit unfair. How can you do this? This is outrageous. But inevitably, what would happen with these things is that the makers of the products would use their own material and essentially make a double profit not only from the payback of the sales price of the material, but also the additional profit for placing it, which doesn't distribute the wealth like it should. I have yet to see how this one's going to go, but I'm going to test this out on a new small build I've already got set aside. Out here at Wasted Island, there was a contract completed to build an aqueduct all the way around the perimeter of the building way up high. This new law will be tested out through a contract to create a pumping and power station that'll send water up to the aqueduct, allow us to make some tremendous waterfalls, and also provide electric power to the building to light the whole thing up as a spectacular creation that it's supposed to be. I've noticed that lumber and wood products have not been getting a lot of economic transaction, except through the composite lumber but use of wood is relatively small there compared to the amount of rocks being used in the world. So this new power plant is going to be steam powered and fueled by charcoal. Charcoal requires a fairly large quantity of wood to make and can stack up to 100 in a slot to make the generators run longer. So it seems like a good choice to help stimulate the wood industry. It's all about creating a diverse set of opportunities for all players. Also, the steam generators will hog down a ton of charcoal in just a few hours, 
So this could provide a couple of loggers with a full-time job just creating charcoal and allows new and old players to chop wood and even create some tree farms to support this new demand. We did come dangerously close to that rise in sea level and are a mere 0.06 meters away from a rise in sea level. So even though this new charcoal powered plant is gonna add even more CO2 to the environment, we also implemented a law that pays a whopping 10 coins per seed planted. In the long term, all these cut trees to fuel the steam generators will produce even more seeds than the cut trees. And with the stimulus to plant them, we should wind up with far more trees on the server absorbing that CO2 than the net output of this new power plant. That's my plan anyway. If a future video is all filmed underwater, then you'll know things didn't go exactly as envisioned. There was more I wanted to show you, like the skyscraper build project, but this video is getting long and they're starting to play me out. I'll have to put it in the next one. Like and subscribe so you don't miss it. I'll see you next time.